Hello friends, today we shall be discussing about hypogonadism and management. Hypogonadism in males. My name is Santosh Ibrahim. I am a specialist registrar in diabetes and endocrinology at Scarborough General Hospital. So the topics for today's discussion would be primary hypogonadism, secondary hypogonadism, erectile dysfunction, gynecomastia, testosterone replacement and endocrine society guidelines for testosterone replacement. So primary uh, hypogonadism is defined as testicular failure uh, with normal hypothalamic functions and pituitary function. So diagnosed by a low serum testosterone, ideally it is taken at 9 a.m. in the morning and yeah, you can see that there will be uh, elevated LH and FSH because of the normal hypothalamic and pituitary function. Also there will be low levels of inhibin B and anti hormone AMH. The characteristics uh, of uh, male hypogonadism is as follows. If it is occurring before the onset of puberty, the testicular volume is usually less than 5 ml. It adversely affects the development of testis. The penis length will be less than 5 cm. There will be no scrotal pigmentation. There will be gynecomastia and a high pitched voice. The fat distribution will be central. Any coid features will be present, such as arm span greater than 1 cm than height, and lower segment to upper segment ratio will be more than 1. There will be delayed bone age and decreased body and facial hair. But if it is occurring, the testicular failure is occurring after puberty, the testis volume will be usually less than 15 mil, uh, mils, and penile length will be normal, skeletal proportions will be normal. There could be no gynecomastia and normal hair distribution, but the hair will be reduced. Again, there will be central fat type of distribution. Osteoporosis and anemia could happen. So the causes are ma mainly genetic causes. And then it could be due to chemotherapy or radiotherapy. It could be due to medications. It could be due to orchitis and other infections. And uh, also it could be due to testicular trauma also. So we shall now discuss about these causes in detail. So in the genetic causes, Klinefelter syndrome is the most important one. So it is the most common congenital form of primary hypogonadism. A lot of them are underdiagnosed and the clinical uh, features will depend on on the age of diagnosis and mosaics will be less symptomatic. In adolescence, the testis uh, will be small but firm. There will be gynecomastia, tall stature and other features of hypogonadism with cognitive dysfunction. Whereas in adulthood, there will be it will be characterized by reduced libido and erectile dysfunction. Gynecomastia in around half of the persons, uh, patients and there will be reduced facial hair associated with obesity and infertility. So the risks associated with client filters are type 2 diabetes, osteoporosis, thromboembolism, malignancies such as extragonadal germ cell tumor. Diagnosis is by karyotyping. It will show the 47XXY in 80% of the cases. In the remainder it will show chromosomal aneuploidies or mosaicism. Bloods will show low testosterone, elevated FSH and LH and elevated SHBG so that is a sex hormone binding globulin and estradiol there will be azospermia management is by lifelong androgen replacement and surgical reduction of gynecomastia fertility is by ICSI that is intracytoplasmic sperm injection but there is an increased risk of chromosomal abnormalities in the offspring another important cause for hypogonadism is cryptorchidism it's found in 10% of the neonates, but uh, most of them descend from the abdomen. So post-pubertal cryptorchidism uh, is less than 0.5%. And among the cryptorchid people, 15% will have bilateral cryptorchidism. The consequences are 75% will become infertile. That's a 10% risk for testicular malignancy because of the intra-abdominal testis. Bloods will show low testosterone and raised gonadotrophins. 
especially in bilateral cryptorchidism and treatment will be with orchidopexy it is best performed before one and a half years and should be certainly done before five years in order to in decrease the risk of later infertility if it is a unilateral and in patients got intra-abdominal testis gonadectomy do, should be done so as to decrease the risk of testicular malignancy and it should be followed by androgen replacement Orchitis and other infections are also a cause of hypogonadism. So 25% of males who develop mumps after puberty, mumps after puberty have associated orchitis. And 25 to 50% of them will have testicular failure. And HIV infection, autoimmune disease also may be associated with the testicular failure. Others are chemotherapy and radiotherapy, especially alkylating agents. Infertility occurs in 50% of the patients following chemotherapy and a lot of uh, patients will require androgen replacement because of the low testosterone. Testes are radio sensitive so hypogonadism can also result from radiation during the treatment of Hodgkin's disease etc. If they want to father the child or fertility is desired sperm should be cryoprecived prior to the treatment. Other drugs like sulfur salicin, colchicin, high, uh, high dose glucocorticoid can reversibly affect the testicular function. Alcohol can also cause testicular failure. Chronic illnesses like uh, chronic renal failure, liver cirrhosis and hemochromatosis can also affect testis. Testicular trauma is another common cause of uh, hypogonadism as a result of loss of one testis it will also affect the function of the remaining testes. Other chromosomal disorders are uh, XX males. In XX males there is X to Y translocation and there is only a, a small part of the Y present in one of the X chromosomes. The incidence is 1 is to 1 in 10,000 births. The features are similar to Klinefelter's but short stature and hypospadias may be present. In the mixed gonad type, that is XX and XO, there, there may be hypospadias and intra-abdominal gonads. And in these patients, bilateral gonadectomy is essential because of, uh, the of cancer and should be followed by antigen replacement therapy. In XYY syndrome, they are taller than average but often, often have primary gonadal failure and impaired sp uh, spermatogenesis. Y chromosome mi micro deletions also cause hypogonadism, so they cause oligoacellspermia, and testosterone levels in Y chromosome micro deletions are not affected. Another chromosomal abnormality associated with hypogonadism is Newland syndrome, which is autosomally dominant, and the incidence is 1 is to 1000 to 1 is 2500. Cause of raised estrogens in males are usually due to neoplasia. It could be tes testicular neoplasia, adrenal neoplasia, liver uh, cancer, hepatoma, or primary testicular failure. Also, it occurs in liver disease, thyrotoxicosis, obesity, androgen resistance syndromes, anti androgen therapy. In uh, liver disease, thyrotoxicosis, and uh, obesity, uh, there will be decreased SHPG. Sorry, in thyrotoxicosis and liver disease, there will be increased SHPG. So, factors affecting the SHPG concentrations, this is very important, especially thyroid hormones and estrogens will increase the SHPG concentration. So, SHPG will be increased in thyro thyrotoxicosis where uh, thyroid hormones are increased and also in estrogens uh, when there is excess estrogens produced as a result of obesity and all, it could be possible and also in liver cirrhosis the SHPG will be high and androgen deficiency and GH deficiency also will raise the level of SHPG whereas low SHPG is find, found in 
uh, increased GH concentrations and also increased insulin concentrations and also increased testosterone and increased glucocorticoids so, so that means that if there is hyperinsulinemia there is acromegaly if there is androgens treatment if there is Cushing syndrome there will be uh, low SHPG also obesity is another cause of low SHPG as also hypothyroidism where the thyroid hormones are decreased you have to note that thyroid, thyroid hormones and estrogens always increase the amount of SSPG. In obesity, it could be both. I mean, peripheral production of estrogens could increase SSPG and obesity as such could decrease the SSPG. Nephrotic syndrome also SSPG is decreased because of the loss of this protein. Investigations uh, for hypo primary hypogonadism. Ideally, the 9 a.m. plasma testosterone is essential because uh, after this, the testosterone levels may fall and uh, it may lead on to false diagnosis of hypogonadism. So, the maximum peak is obtained around 9 a.m. So, that is why the uh, morning plasma testosterone is very important. And if this level is low, this should be repeated. That is, in order to have a diagnosis of hypogonadism, you should have two readings. And SHPG, you have to measure the SHPG and testosterone at 9 a.m. Gonadotropins will be raised in primary testicular failure. Estradiol should be requested if there is a gynecomastia or a testicular tumor is suspected. Inhibin and AMH will be low in primary testicular failure, but it will be uh, okay in primary and hypothalamic dysfunction, that is secondary hypogonadism. Other investigations, strotal ultrasound to look for any hydrocele, volume of testis and blood flow and semen analysis. If it is, uh, this is uh, semen analysis is normal, it means that the gonads are healthy. And if it's low, males will uh, consider sperm banking or cryopreservation preservation to preserve fertility. Dynamic tests are uh, HCG stimulation test and clomiphene stimulation test which are of not that significance but we will just discuss it in brief. So HCG stimulation test is mainly for uh, looking at Leydig cell function. HCG 2000 IU is given intramuscularly on day 0 and 2 and testosterone is measured on day 0, 2 and 4. So if if there is absent testis uh, in if the uh, testis is absent in the scrotum and if it is present in the indra in, in, in the abdomen in pre in boys there will be a response to the HCE but uh, so that could indicate the testis is intra abdominal but if the testosterone doesn't fa uh, fail to rise I mean doesn't rise after HCG it indicates that there is no functioning tes testicular tissue. Whereas in secondary hypogonadism, there will be an exaggerated response to HCG. So normally there will be a response to HCG in normal testis. If uh, the testis are not uh, found externally, but if, the, if there is a response to HCG, it indicates intra-abdominal testis. And if there is no response, I there is no testicular te tissue. And an exaggerated response will be found in hypogonadism, secondary hypogonadism. Clomiphene stimulation test, it is used to assess the integrity of hypothalamus pituitary testicular axis. So a normal response to clomiphene for 7 days is a two-fold increase in LH and FSH measured on 0, 4, 7 and 10. So if there is a subnormal response, it indicates hypothalamic or pituitary hypogonadism, secondary hypogonadism, but it does not differentiate between hypothalamic and pituitary. So secondary hypogonadism is a result of hypothalamic or pituitary dysfunction. There will be no uh, low testosterone as well as no low normal or low LH and FSH and the inhibin B and AMH will be normal here. So the causes are idiopathic, functional, structural and 
And coming to the uh, idiopathic causes, the most important cause is Kalman syndrome, which we will discuss later. And there are other genetic causes, mutations of GnRHR, that is gonadotropin releasing hormone receptor or GPR54 gene mutations. Another entity is idiopathic hypogonadotropic hypogonadism (IHS), fertile enuc syndrome, and congenital adrenal hyperplasia, where there is a DAX1 gene mutation. Functional can be seen in exercise, weight changes, anabolic steroids, stress, systemic illness, medicational recreation drugs, structural in pituitary tumors like adenoma, craniopharyngioma, germinoma, and infiltrations like sarcoid and hemochromatosis, head trauma, surgery or radiotherapy. Kalman syndrome, it is a failure of episodic uh, GnR secretion, plus or uh, minus anosmia this and that is anosmia could or could not be present it results from disordered migration of GnRH producing neurons into hypothalamus the incidence is 1 in 10,000 and male to female ratio is 4 is to 1 the genetics of Kalman syndrome it is commonly as a result of isolated gene mutation most important one is an extinct Cal1 gene or it could be also due to the autosomal dominant FGFR1 mutation or Cal2 gene or it could be a, even a recessive trait. So Cal1 uh, mutation resp is responsible for most of the cases of extreme Kalman syndrome. Yeah, boys are affected in this so the Cal1 gene is located on XP223 and it is more severe whereas mutations of FGFR1 located on chromosome 8 is uh, inherited in or some dominant form. So the affected males will have an increased I I likelihood of undescended testis at birth. So undescended testis is more common in FGFR1 mutations. Whereas severe phenotype, that is a, uh, severe uh, hypogonadism will be found in Cal1 gene mutation. And there is a 12 to 15 percent of in incidence of delayed puberty in family members. Clinical features of Kalman syndrome, 75% will have anosmia, cleft lip, cleft palate, sensory neural deafness, cerebellar ataxia, region, renal neurogenesis may be found. Bloods will show low testosterone, low LH, low FSH levels. Rest of the pituitary will be normal. And normal pituitary imaging, normal hypothalamus. Absent olfactory bulbs may be seen. And when the GnRH is replaced, normalization of pituitary and gordanal function will happen. Coming to idiopathic hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism, it's a congenital form. It is distinct, indistinguishable from Kalman syndrome, especially when there is no anosmia. So anosmia basically distinguishes between Kalman's and congenital form uh, of IHS. But you have to remember that anosmia is present only in 75% of Kalman syndrome. So more than 90% are male. There, is, there are no receptor mutation, gene mutations when compared with the Kalman syndrome, so it is very uncommon here. And IHS may progress through normal puberty and may have normal testicular size, but will present with infertility or poor libido and potency in the future. And fertile enoch syndrome is incomplete GnRH deficiency. Uh, they can have a normal spermatogenesis and testicular growth, but there will be insufficient virilization. It, they may require testosterone supplementation and also HCG for fertility. Congenital adrenal hyperplasia is rare X-linked or autosomal receive inherited disease. Disorder in, it is caused by a mutation of DAX gene which is located on the X chromosome. So it presents with ad primary adrenal uh, failure in, in infancy and hypothalamic hypogonadism. When we come to structural, craniopharyngiomas are the most common cause in children, whereas in adulthood, prolactinomas are most common. Also systemic illness, which we will discuss later, can also cause secondary hypogonadism. Drugs such as anabolic steroids, cocaine, narcotic drugs and also all drugs causing hyperprolactinemia. 
another reason is uh, another uh, cause is lorentz moon beetle syndrome which is characterized by congenital severe obesity gonadotropin deficiency retinal dystrophy polydactyly and learning disability and hemochromatosis which can cause primary as well as secondary hypogonadism prader willi syndrome is also one of the an important cause uh, of secondary hypogonadism so it's congenital it's one in pres uh, present in 1 into 25000 births there is a loss of an imprinted gene on paternally derived chromosome 15 characterized by almond dice downturn mouth strabismus thin upper lip severe hypertonia poor feeding they will have hyperphagia and obesity because of the hypothalamic dysfunction also present with short stature small hands and feet and learning disability they are associated with type 2 diabetes systemic illness resulting resulting in hypogonadism or any acute illness such as mi sepsis etc severe stress hemochromatosis endocrine disease such as cushing's hyperprolactinemia liver cirrhosis crf ckd chronic renal failure chronic anemia such as in thalassemia sickle cell gi disease such as celiac crohn's infection such as aids rheumatological disease rheumatoid arthritis respiratory disease copd cystic fibrosis etc and cardiac disease congenital cardiac failure so all of these conditions can also cause hypogonadism coming to erectile dysfunction erectile dysfunction is the it's defined as a consistent inability to achieve or maintain an erect penis sufficient for satisfactory sexual intercourse it affects approximately 10% of the males and more than 50% of females 50% of the males sorry for uh, 10% of the males and uh, in general and in more than 50% of the males in ab above 70 years so it in, in its incidence increases as age progresses so it could be uh, it could be due to several reasons such as neurological damage arterial insufficiency venous incompetence androgen deficiency or penile abnormalities the causes are as follows such as psychological such as in stress psychiatric illness drugs most important is alcohol uh, antihypertensives such as beta blockers methyl dopa simetidine recreational drugs such as marijuana heroin methadone tranquilizers tcas benzodiazepines digoxin glucocorticoids anabolic steroids estrogens antiandrogens endocrine it could be due to hypogonadism primary or secondary hyperprolactinemia diabetes and thyroid dysfunction neurological due to spinal cord peripheral neuropathy or autoimmune neuropathy ms vascular could be due to peripheral vascular disease trauma diabetes or venous incompetence other diseases such as hemochromatosis priapism peyronie's prostatectomy all could result in ed history taking is very important to rule out about uh, all the to know about all the uh, medications or other conditions which could predispose to ed an abrupt onset is often psychogenic in nature and which is intermittent but progressive and persistent dysfunction indicates an organic cause a history of diabetes liver cirrhosis neurological cardiovascular or endocrine disease should be ruled out intermittent claudication suggests a vascular cause also a history of genital urinary trauma or surgery should be sought recent change in bowel or bladder function may indicate a neurological cause a psychological history also should be taken management is by treating the underlying disorder or stopping the offending drugs androgens are first line therapy in male with hypogonadism hyperprolactinemia is treated with dopamine agonists so the main drugs are phosphodiesterase inhibitors they increase the gmp cyclic gmp in erectile tissue by blocking uh, the phosphodiesterase 5 enzyme so uh, it amplifies the action of nitric oxide 50 to 80% success rate is claimed alprostadil is another drug which causes smooth muscle relaxation and vasodilatation this administered intraurethrally and is Uh, and is absorbed from the system clean 
there is a 60 to 65 percent success rate in that the main uh, PD uh, phosphatized resin inhibitors used are silinafil, varadafil and tadlafil you can see that uh, the longest half life is for tadlafil and also it is uh, tadlafil is uh, uh, associated with less adverse effects especially uh, visual and uh, disturbance and nasal congestion and headaches is reduced in tadlafil and usually a 30 to 60 minute period is recommended prior to the sexual activity I mean to take the drug prior to the sexual activity contraindications as you all know uh, like uh, nitrate use recent MI unstable angina or uh, hypotension also in severe heart failure and liver failure it is contraindicated also in patients with retinitis pigmentosa or patients on ketoconazole or HIV protease inhibitors intracavernous injection with alprostadil has got a 70 to 100 percent success rate so it should be titrated in increments until the desired effect is achieved papaverin is another PD inhibitor which could be intracavernously injected but it causes more side effects main side effects of intracavernous injection are priapism 1 to 5 percent and if direction is more than 4 hours uh, you should seek urgent medical advice fibrosis at the site of injection infection are can happen contraindication is sickle cell disease vacuum de devices results are good and 90 percent of uh, men achieve a satisfactory erection side effects are pain and hematoma penile process uh, uh, processes are indicated in patients who are reluctant to try other forms of therapy or if other therapy has have failed complications are infection and mechanical failure some cases could benefit from uh, psychosexual counseling surgery is rarely indicated as the results are not good some forms of vascular surgery are used but the benefits are very less coming to gynecomastia it is enlargement of the main breast tissue as a result of hyperplasia of the glandular tissue the diameter is more than 2 cm of the glandular tissue. This is very important. The diameter should be at least 2 cm. It is present up to one third of the males less than 30 years and up to 50% of the males above 45 years. Increased estrogen is the main contributor and it acts on the breast tissue and results in gynecomastia. This increased estrogen could be due to increased aromatase activity which will convert increased testosterone to estrogen such as in testosterone replacement or increased LH HCG activity from other testicular tumors or increased estrogen could also be due to any other conditions which will increase the estrogen and decrease the testosterone such as in liver cirrhosis, liver failure or obesity or if uh, the SHPG concentrations are increased it binds the testosterone more uh, and the effectively the free testosterone will be less so any condition with increased uh, SHPG will also result in can also result in gynecomastia so causes of gynecomastia could be physiological could be drugs it could be due to hypogonadism tumors endocrine and systemic illnesses so physiological it is found in neonates in puberty and idiopathic drugs could be estrogens antiandrogens testosterone itself spironolactone AC inhibitors, calcium antagonists, and digoxin, and anti cancer agents like alkylating agents, uh, alkylating uh, agents, simetidin, and alcohol, marijuana, heroin, methadone, those recreational drugs. Also, antibiotics like uh, ketoconazole, metronidazole, anti tuberculous agents, and also tricyclic antidepressants benzodiazepines, opiates, etc. Antiretroviral drugs are an important cause of gynecomastia. Impact in, in chronic uh, myeloid leukemia can also cause that. Hypogonadism can cause gynecomastia whether it is primary or secondary. Tumors such as estrogen or androgen producing testicular adrenal tumors. HCG producing tumors using, using germinomas, 
ectopic uh, tumor such as ectopic HCG producing tumors such as lung, aromatizing producing aromatase producing testicular or hepatic tumors, and in endocrine causes are thyrotoxicosis, Cushing's acromegaly, and androgen sensitive syndromes, and in systemic illness such as liver cirrhosis, CR, uh, chronic renal failure, and HIV. History should uh, consist of uh, asking about the duration and progression and if it is rapidly enlarging and if there is a recent onset in a lean post pubertal male, further investigation should is warranted. Also if the gynecomastia is painful, further investigation should be done. You need to exclude any underlying testicular cancer, ask for any symptoms of hypochondrism such as reduced erections and reduced libido. Also any symptoms of systemic diseases involving the hepatic renal or endocrine systems. Drug history including recreation drugs and alcohol. Clinical examination, you should distinguish the glandular tissue from the fat, measure diameter. Gynecomastia is present if more than 2 cm. If it is more than 5 cm hard or irregular, you need to exclude breast cancer. And also look for galacteria. Palpates the testis exclude to exclude tumor and also look for any atrophy secondary sexual characteristics look for any evidence of systemic disease chronic liver disease chronic renal failure thyrotoxicosis cushings chronic cardiac or pulmonary disease investigations are serum testosterone estradiol lhfsh prolactin shpg hcg and liver function tests so these are the basic tests Additional investigations are, if testicular uh, tumor is suspected, then do a testicular ultrasound. If adrenal tumor is suspected, do abdominal CT. Malignancy is suspected, do mammography and FNAC. If lung cancer is suspected, do a chest radiograph and CT. Other investigations depending on the clinical suspicion, such as renal or thyroid dysfunction. So these are the... Uh, various ways uh, uh, in which uh, gynecomastia could present such as when you measure the HCG, LH, testosterone, estradiol and DSH. If the uh, HCG or uh, estradiol is in increased, you, new, you need to do a testicular ultrasound to rule out any tumors. If it is normal, then you need to do uh, abdominal chest imaging to fi find any ectopic source of this. If the LH and testosterone are increased, there could be androgen resistance. If there is decreased LH and decreased testosterone, there could it could be secondary hypogonadism. But after doing a prolactin, because you need to rule out the prolactinoma first. And if it's prolactinoma, if it is not a prolactinoma, it could be, it is due to secondary hypogonadism. And if the LH and is increased and the testosterone is decreased, it is primary hypogonadism. If the TSH is decreased, it could be due to thyrotoxicosis and all these could be normal then it could be idiopathic. So management is by treating the underlying disorder and withdrawing, withdrawing the offending drugs. Reassurance should be done in majority of the cases it will subside. Treatment may be required for cosmetic reasons or if it is painful. Drug treatment is only partially effective and also uh, it will be it will benefit, it may benefit in treating gynecomastia of recent onset. Surgical methods are reduction mammoplasty if it is severe and persistent. Medical treatment, mainly the anti-estrogens are used, especially tamoxifen and clomiphene. So they both are anti-estrogens, so they are used in reducing pain and swelling. Here clomiphene also decreases the pain and swelling. Whereas arom aromatase inhibitors like testosterone, lactone and anastrozole are not very effective because uh, tamoxifen and clomiphene are more effective. Danazole is a non aromatizable androgen so it can also decrease the breast size but it could cause increased weight gain and acne.
and uh, let's come to the androgen replacement therapy so if i have not uh, put the title in here so the uh, treatment of the testosterone therapy are to improve libido and sexual function improve uh, mood and well being and improve muscle mass and strength testosterone will increase the muscle mass and strength and also uh, especially when given to hypogonadal women but men and also lean body mass also will increase it will also prevent osteoporosis because it will increase the bone mineral density and decrease the risk for osteoporosis hence but when you do the testosterone replacement you have to tell the patient that it does not restore fertility and it may suppress normal spermatogenesis and in males with secondary hypogonadism who desire fertility they should be treated with gonadotropins and the testosterone testosterone should be withdrawn in such uh men who want to have the who wish to become uh wish to become uh fathers you know they they have to the uh, the t- testosterone replacement therapy should be shop- stopped and they should be treated with gonadotropins to initiate spermatogenesis and weight reduction also is associated with the rise in testosterone before starting uh, testosterone therapy you should clinically evaluate the patient for any prostatic hypertrophy breast cancer prostate cancer where it is absolutely contraindicated and any cardiovascular disease or sleep apnea where there is it is relatively contraindicated and you should do a rectal examination of prostate and breast if needed and also in the labs you should do a psa and also hemoglobin and hematocrit and cholesterol profile contraindications are absolute are prostate cancer and breast cancer and relative are benign, benign prostate hyperplasia polycythemia sleep apnea monitoring 3 months after initiating therapy and then 6 to 12 months it should be by clinical evaluation so uh, to know about the relief of symptoms and to exclude side effects uh, ideally you should measure the serum testosterone at 9 am rectal examination of the prostate if more than 45 years and also psa if more than 45 years hemoglobin and hematocrit and serum lipid also the effect of androgen replacement therapy and the risk of uh, coronary heart disease are known and in prostatic disease it will induce the symptoms of bladder outflow obstruction especially in people with prostatic hypertrophy mm, testosterone uh, doesn't increase the risk of developing prostatic cancer but it will promote the growth of an existing cancer that is why it is contraindicated in non prostatic cancer and other side effects are gynecomastia acne fluid retention obstructive sleep apnea hepatotoxicity and mood swings and also polycythemia If polycythemia is present you should reduce the dose these are the endocrine society guidelines for testosterone replacement now whom to diagnose uh with hyp- uh, about uh, whom to diagnose with hypogonadism you can diagnose hypogonadism with symptoms and signs of testosterone deficiency and uh, also with low testosterone or free testosterone concentrations in these patients you have to diagnose uh, hypogonadism and no routine screening is recommended for hypogonadism you need to distinguish between primary and secondary hypogonadism by measuring lh and fsh further evaluation to measure to identify the etiology of uh, hypothalamic pituitary or testicular dysfunction to, should be done so whom to start on testosterone therapy and whom to whom not to therapy should be started in hypogonadal men to induce and maintain secondary sex characteristics and correct symptoms of deficiency but stop therapy in men planning fertility because it will suppress the spermatogenesis especially in secondary hypogonadal and do not stop start a uh, therapy in men with breast or prostate cancer it is contraindicated or a palpable prostate nodule or in duration with psa more than 4 nanogram or a psa more than 3 nanogram plus high risk of prostate cancer and all these people don't start also in elevated people with elevated uh, hematocrit untreated 
obstructive sleep apnea, severe lower urinary tract symptoms, uncontrolled CCF, MI or stroke within six months. And in men, a, be, uh, be between 55 to 69, when you start the testosterone replacement, you have to discuss the risks and benefits, especially about prostate cancer risk and prostate monitoring. Also, uh, you should assess the prostate cancer risk before starting testosterone treatment and 3 to 12 months after ta starting testosterone. And also in men between 40 to 69 who are at increased risk of prostate cancer, example African Americans or people with a first degree relative of diagnosed prostate cancer, definitely the prostate cancer risk should be of, uh, I mean, uh, discussed and the monitoring options and do not prescribe to all men uh, uh, above or uh, at uh, 65 with low testosterone concentrations uh, do not prescribe testosterone for all uh, <coughs> you have to prescribe them for people who are having symptoms or conditions suggestive of deficiency and also with a low morning testosterone and the therapy should be for individualized basis for people above 65 years and in HIV infected men you can have short term testosterone therapy in HIV people who are having low testosterone concentrations and weight loss so as to maintain body weight in type 2 diabetes but however do not offer testosterone therapy as a means of improving glycemic control thank you and finally follow up and precautions uh, in hypocondrial men who have started testosterone therapy evaluate the patient after treatment initiation to assess whether the patient has responded to treatment or is suffering from any adverse effects and is complying with the treatment regimen and urological consultation during first 12 months if there is an increase of PSA uh, 1.4 above the baseline or a confirmed PSA more than 4 there should be a urological consultation for these patients or also for a abnormal uh, any prostatic abnormality detected on DRE digital rectal examination also there, there should be a consul urological consultation and after one year the prostate monitoring should can go back to the standard guidelines for prostate cancer screening based on the race and age of patients. Thank you.